Welcome. Let me talk about something that's become very popular in just my general teaching here at St. Mark's School and um, in just my general conversation with people across the, uh, I guess, the internet. Um, I've been thinking about what makes a school math genius, and I have to say that uh, one of the first problems is that mathematics is often perceived in a different way at the high school level and middle school level than it is by a mathematician. So when people think math genius, they often think someone that can do 17 digit multiplications in their head. I mean, that's very impressive, don't get me wrong, but that's not what mathematics is about. Mathematics is not about computation. Certainly computation happens in mathematics, certainly mathematics is often inspired by computation and how to make that easier, but it's really about innovation of thinking, about finding patterns, more important understanding what patterns are true, and asking like, what if questions if patterns aren't true? So um, the real key principles, I think, of being a math school genius, which actually pervade all types of thinking at all levels of one's education and being, are basically the following five. Here they are in nice colored boxes. Um, I won't have time to go through all five in this video, but I'll make this a multi-part video and I'll go through all five one in a term. So what I've got written down here probably doesn't make much sense right now, but they do form the basis of a course I've put together for middle schoolers and slightly older kids called Mathematical Thinking, which you'll find on the website. Um, that's also going to be an online course as well, so my next work. So here's, here's the principles of what I think it means, Dr. T's five principles of being a math genius. Number one, visualize. Thinking of a picture is phenomenally helpful. And math geniuses do it all the time. So, okay, I just said speed multiplication is not important. I agree. But actually, it can help if you uh, want to think about things like 23 times 17. One can do it in one's head on a basis of understanding what this really means. Well, this is really a geometry question. What's the area of a 23 by 17 rectangle? But if I split it into four pieces, one that's 20 inches long by 3 inches long, that's 23 inches, 10 inches by 7 inches, I can see this picture makes it very clear how to work out 23 times 17. There's one piece of area 200, one piece of area 140, another piece of area 30, another piece of area 21. So that means the total area must be a 340, 370, 391. That is this computation, 23 times 17 is 391. And I can actually do that in my head, not because I'm a genius, it's only because I thought to think of a picture in my head and I actually do this literal picture in my head. So um, that's not speaking to speed computation, that's speaking to understanding, and understanding is a genius principle. Uh, again, visualize, think of a picture. Uh, that can come in all sorts of uh, levels. Uh, I just did arithmetic, but actually it applies to algebra too. And a common student mistake, for example, is say something like a plus b squared is a squared plus b squared. So in algebra class, you see this all the time. But a math genius will just give himself a moment to pause. What is a plus b times a plus b? Well, if I draw a picture, it's very obvious, yes, indeed, there is an a squared piece, there is a b squared piece, but there's more going on, there's a b and a, another a b. So the correct answer is plus two a b. And I didn't do anything like memorize anything like FOIL or whatever those things are. I just drew a picture and that's obvious what I needed to do. And in fact, I'm sure I could draw a picture to generalize this. And that's what makes a math genius, seeing some insight that leads to have a deeper understanding that goes, goes much further. Um, this also links with uh, one of my other principles, which is to play. But um, a picture is very helpful in play. And one sort of classic example I'll go through now is something like this. Here's a, here's a grid of a four by four array of dots. And uh, if I just stare at this, this picture is actually very informative. Um, yes, it's certainly 16 dots, 4 times 4, but I can also think of it as 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, uh, so plus 3, what I'm saying, plus 2, plus 1. It's the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and then back down again. And the answer, since it's the same picture of 4 by 4 dots, must be 16. So right off the bat, as a genius, I can now say the sum of all the numbers up to 10 and back down again must be 10 squared. Or the sum of all the numbers from one up to a million back down again, without me even doing it, I can do it in my head, is a million squared. Visualize, think of a picture. That is a very powerful genius technique. Um, another math genius technique is number two, which I call is just use common sense. Avoid grungy work. Mathematicians hate doing tedious grungy work. Uh, for example, these are going to be silly examples, but really quick. 613 minus 37, I think, oh, yick. But if I thought of that 613 minus 40 and then add 3, much easier. So it's basically 61 take away 4 is 57 with a 3 on top, and then add 3. So it must be a 576. Um, that's pretty quick. That's just playing with that idea. Or another one would be, what's 15% of 62? Ooh, 15% of 62. Uh, I need my pen here, a little slow, sorry for this. 15% of 62. Well, 10% is easy. That's just going to be 6.2. And 5% is going to be half of 10%. 
and 15% is 10% plus 5%, so it must be uh, half of that is 3.1, answer must be 9.3. 50% of 62 must be 9.3. Or if I needed to work out 815 divided by 5, maybe I'll double 815 and divide by 10 instead. So it must be uh, 1630 divided by 10, the answer must be 163. Just, just using nice little common sense. Uh, if I'm a teacher in an algebra class, which I happen to be this year, uh, common sense, use it all the way through, all levels. For example, if I ask a student to solve x plus 2 squared equals 25, those that uh, like hard work will probably expand and go x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 25 and da 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 quadratic formula, yik. But look, just void grungy work, something squared is 25. My something better be 5 or negative 5, and off I go, very easy to solve. Um, I can do other things. Let's just keep. I'll give me. I'll give you tons of examples of thinking like a genius. Here's a crazy question that uh, people might think is impossible to know: Is uh, 17 to the 3,000th and 3 power minus 1 a prime number? Well, genius answer: No, it's an odd number raised to an odd power. That's odd. Minus 1 is even. Certainly not prime. Done. Uh, what else can I do? Oh, okay. How about this one? Uh, 806 whoops, divided by 97. Well, too hard. 806 divided by 100 would be easy. That's 8. Obviously, with the remainder of 6. Well, 97 is pretty close to 100, so I bet the answer is again going to be 8. And what's the remainder going to be? Well, I certainly have a remainder of 6, but I'm off by 3 each time I did a group of 100. So it must be a remainder of also 3, uh, sorry, 8 groups of 3. So it must be 8 remainder 30. Um, oh, I just go on and on. There's lots of little genius type things to do here. Uh, for example, if someone claimed to me, da 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 da, just I'm being slow with my pen here, that 10 factorial happens to equal 2587093684050, I have to actually say, no, something's wrong. And I'm not going to compute 10 to the factorial to figure this out, but I do know that 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8, all the way down, times 2 times 1. It's got a 10 in it, so it should end at least 1, 0. But that's actually got, it's also got 2 times 5 in it, so it should have another 10 in it, so it should end in a second 0, and it's not happening there. That has to be incorrect. Uh, a lot of students love to do arithmetic no matter what, when the answer is staring them in the face, so a genius would might say, when confronted with the following problem, work out uh, 33 thirteenths times, I know, 13 sixty-sixths. Well, the answer is obviously a half. Can you see why without even doing it? 33 times 13, don't want to know. 13 times 66, don't want to know. But common factor of 13, and clearly the answer is going to be a half. So this is just genius thinking. Um, I don't know more, 42 times 98. Well, it's really 42 times 100 minus two lots of 42. That's an easier way to think about it. All right, that's the first two principles. If you just pause and before you leap in to do something grungy, you might save yourself a lot of work. Just stand back and stare at what you're dealing with. Avoid hard work if you can. Just use common sense, and that makes life so much easier. So I'll stop this video for now on those two principles, but in my next video, I'll do the next three and explain what I mean by them. Thanks very much.